this incredible new series, Jupiter's Legacy. What was it about this role or about the series that really made you want to be a part of it? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I My hands are covered in honey. I'm putting this down. There is a really sticky situation. Okay, I'm focusing on the question. Um, uh, what um, attracted me to this role and character? I think that's what it is. Um, yes. I, Jamie, I loved, I loved the character, first of all. I When I first... I was not familiar with this comic. I was, I'm not much of a comic book person just growing up, but my brother really was more of a connoisseur of that, you know, space. Though I do love, I, I, I love growing up watching Mark's movies and stuff. Um, but when this came along, I like Googled it, right? And I saw the, the pictures of Chloe and like stuff about the comic. And I was like, whoa, it's so like, I, it's like visceral, like really cool look of the whole thing. And I was like, this is spicy and I'm excited. Um, and then, just like researching that, that I love the Shakespearean elements too. I keep going on about this, Jamie, but I am a shameless, not for Shakespeare. I love the King Lear elements going on, the Romeo and Juliet, so even a little bit of Midsummer Night's Dream with Order and Disorder. So like, there's all these things that I was like so excited by. And again, again, Mark Miller being at the helm of this, you know, this is being his baby. Um, so it was all, it was a combination of all of it. I was like, right away. I want this. <laughs> what was your audition like for Chloe? Um, well, I think I saw this question from a Miss Alberta, which I have to send a little love to her. Hello. Because <laughs> uh, I know she asked. Um, the audition was a tape, Jamie. Now, it it's funny because I didn't have a script at the time. I had just looked up what I whatever research I could do online. Um, I put the tape together. And the funny thing with auditions, <laughs> at least in, with with myself is like I, I have to try and like forget about it because you'll just drive yourself crazy like there's the there's the nerves then there's you put in the work and you're like what's gonna happen and it's usually a really long like waiting process it's typically a lot of waiting sometimes in a miraculous situation it's like it's you know, it can be a quick span of time until you get a verdict but um in this case it was just like do it forget about it because you'll drive yourself nuts um and then I ended up getting word, I don't know if it was, because uh, I had just finished shooting Shoplifters of the World. That's when I put the tape, or when this was all happening. But I got the word in the, I, I remember this very vividly, in the parking lot of Gold's Gym Bridgewater, which I was just talking about today. But shout out to Rob and Mary, Bridgewater Gold's uh, family-owned business. Um, I was in the parking lot there and got the word in the, in the car. And I freaked out because, Jamie, I don't know about you, but I am a, <laughs> I, I am not good with containing my excitement. This is you probably can't tell. I'm, I get very energetic. Um, so I was like a bunny rabbit freaking out. Not gonna keep any secrets, but um, no, it was exhilarating and so wonderful. And now we are here and it is out. Did you see it, Jamie? Do you have- Of course. Your feel. <laughs> it was insane. I mean, Chloe's this incredible, independent, strong woman. Was that always there for you in the script? Or was there something maybe you even added to her that wasn't in that initial breakdown for her? Oh, goodness. Well, I think I, I did see that from the pages. And that's what, again, excited me. Because when, whenever it's like... Not when you, like, when you hope to get roles, you hope to get roles, at least in my case, I, I, I aspire to play characters that are, are female strong characters that are, they are flawed. They're not just one thing, not just attitude and angst, but, you know, have multiple dimensions. And I found that with her and also the arc she goes on is is really intense and, and super cool. Um, So that character, it, as far as approaching her, I was like, well, there's a lot you know, I got, I want to work on the layers here and hopefully from what you see on screen, people will, you know, feel for her because she does do a lot of questionable things in the show, but hopefully you understand where she's coming from emotionally. And as far as like adding things, I don't know if it's a conscious decision. I just, I don't know if, what, it, what, what I think in my head versus what actually ends up happening when you live in the moment is different. Like, I don't think you could ever really plan it. I don't know. I'm, I just go into it saying, don't blow it and do this character justice. And hopefully that is the case. <laughs> Talk about how you would describe her relationship with her parents then. Well, Jamie, that is a very dysfunctional one. It is, there is love at the core of it, but it is dysfunctional because I feel like Chloe of the bunch of the characters in the show, she might be the most, one of the most human because um, she is so deeply feeling. She's all about keeping it real. She's certainly not built like her father is even though she is a stubborn person like him. Um, she's she's just like, I don't want to put on this persona of perfection. You know, you guys are like, 
you want to go save the world. Can we save the family first? They weren't there around uh, for her and her brother when they were growing up. She sees her brother kind of turning into this drone, you know, trying to live up to the dad's expectations. And she's like, you just stop trying to be the symbol of perfection because it's not possible. And you're damaged. I'm damaged. You're in denial about it. I'm open about it, but I'm, you know, the way she's coping with it isn't healthy. Right. Um, drugs and the party life, so all of this hedonism. Sex. That, <laughs> yeah. So she's doing all of this stuff as a means to cope with it and try and survive this pain and self-loathing she's navigating, anxiety. She's kind of in this constant, I feel like, state of internal panic, you know, like feeling like she's being picked apart. She feels gross inside. And I think the whole thing about going on a rant is like she she's trying to first just be comfortable in her own skin and you have to love yourself first before you can go and 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 save the world or and be a positive person out there you need to work on that you know and and she's just struggling with it because she's got all this headwind you know swirling around her but that's why when she meets uh mr hutch hashtag clutch it's like you know here's someone that gets her and doesn't want to stifle who she is because she she hates the fact that she is hurting the people she loves the most her family by not being a part of the union but she just doesn't want to sell out you know, even though she is, in a sense, selling out by being a model on billboards and presenting a different kind of right. persona of perfection and flawlessness. But, um, you know, she just know she feels like a fraud as it is. And she doesn't want that to be kind of just amplified even more by saying, I am a perfect symbol, like, you know, of, of almost like of worship, these super beings. It's oh, yeah. awesome. I'm going to ramble, but it's like there's just so much there's juiciness in this material, which was what made it so, you know, <laughs> enticing. And the stunt work is insanely bonkers. Talk about what you had to do each day to prepare for this role. Well, Jamie, we were in Toronto, I'd say about a month or so before shooting started. We were on the ground doing stunt training with our amazing stunty team. Then we were doing weight training in the gym, our trainer, Nick Robinson. So we were like, doing all kinds of preparation, learning the proper way to throw punches, which I'm still getting that down, remember to tuck the thumb, um, you know, the proper way to tumble, all of these different aspects. And then, you know, learning how to fly, which I've been talking about this a lot because it was a big deal for me conquering my fear of heights. It was like, it's no joke. It's something that has like getting on escalators, like has oh. given me fright. Like I, I, it's something I have nightmares of falling off like big cliffs and like downstairs. Oh. It's not like even the point where I get, I get dizzy spells and nosebleeds, like even on stage that's happened to me when I was doing liaisons, um, you know, so it's something that's a fear that has certainly gripped me. And I, I didn't realize it until the day came when I, I saw the actors in this in the sky or in our soundstage, like soaring with the harnesses. on. I'm like, All right, this is a big this is like we got to fly. And so I was kind of stealing myself and, you know, finally doing it, though, it was rocky at first, a lot of flailing limbs, but eventually through the guide of our wonderful you know stunt team Aleche Rosado my stunt double like coaching me through it I finally conquered it so there's all these elements that go in you know into the product that you see on screen to hopefully be believable and exciting to watch it's a process <laughs> I think everyone's favorite moment on screen has been or at least the most talked about that I've seen is when Chloe says can you take a punch what are some of your favorite moments from filming well, Jamie, well, what about you? What was yours? That has to be iconic yeah. for the series. I'm sorry. I love that. Yeah, it was so fun. Like reading that for the first time, I was like, I, this is, I love this girl. Because she's got, again, she's so faceted. She's got a lot of pain going on to navigate. But there's such, like, I love her attitude and her fierceness and how unfiltered she is. That moment was great. Um, and there's so, I, I love the, the clutch moments. We have a lot of clutch moments in this show, I feel. of uh, Really nice, like, fiery relationship. Um, I also love the scene. I, I love that bagel scene too with Josh because that was an audition scene. And I just oh. think it really sums up that, you know, how they're, well, they're not really, they're kind of just, they can't communicate or get through to one another. They love one another. Their intentions are both good. Um, but each of them are kind of crying out in their own way. She's crying out, I think, at the dinner scene, which is also a fun one, but it's abrasive, right? And it's, it's, a, it's a little, it's volatile, volatile. Uh, but this and that's in the bagel scene she's crying out again in a, in a softer way like just like be my father you know so there's so many you know ups and downs in the show that each scene was an exciting one because i was like oh my gosh what's she gonna do next what's she gonna say how are we gonna do this oh my gosh you're a part of social media what kind of fan feedback have you been receiving so far to the series oh gosh well uh, it's been really incredible i have to say like 
the response of like the show and how Chloe is resonating with people has just made my heart warm so much. I do want to give a shout out to Miguel Jimenez because he, I want to thank him for the support. I saw that tweet of yours. Thank you for the love. It means so much. Thank you to all the other fans and the new ones coming along speaking to your question. I am so grateful to them, Jamie, because without them, like I would not be able to have this opportunity to do this, do what I love and to get to share my passions with them on social media is really incredible. Like it's, it's I, today I just shared Shared a, a little message in Hindi with um, Netflix India, like because on Netflix we have we've hit number one and among a few other countries as well. So I just want because I've been learning Hindi and I love so much like sharing my I call myself a cultural adventurous and I love exploring cultures through music. It's always through song. Like that's the that's the start how it was for Mandarin with me. Like uh, learning all the different Teresa Tang songs through Chinese traditional ballet. You know I'm getting into Italian. There's so much and to get to share that with um, the people who are watching the show and the people who've been with me before. Like it's a joy because I do think like you find bits of yourself when you learn about different cultures, there's Absolutely. gems. It's a gift, not only for the giver, like the person who you're learning about their culture from, like who's teaching you about their customs, traditions, philosophies, their art, but it's also a, a gift obviously for the receiver to learn about it and to be enriched and enlightened. So I've been in, in, enjoying that tremendously. And, you know, I feel in the love and it's wonderful. I want to give, I feel like they're, they're giving me so much love. I want to give a part of myself back in, in whatever way I can. So it's been, it's been lovely. <laughs> You're doing a great job. I see you trying to touch so many people. So it's a, it's really sweet of you to, to go out there and just do so much social media so that way people feel I, that they're connected to you. Yeah, it's a it's a great way you know and uh it's i don't know i i will have to connect on social media you and i jamie yes Not, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what's next for you do you have anything big coming up well speaking of how the whole hindi thing is because i was in australia and that's where i met this lovely uh woman aruna and we became best friends like sisters and she introduced me to you know well she knew that I spoke Mandarin she's like why don't I teach you Hindi so that's how we started this whole journey together and I was like well come on I want to hear some of the music and she played we ended up like hitting it off making like three mm -hmm. dances together until the wee hours of the night but it was in, I was in Australia because I was shooting Stephen King's Children of the Corn, which will be coming out soon. I can't say too much but it is juicy it is horror I don't know about you Jamie if you're are you a horror fan at all? I am. I'm waiting excitedly to hear more about this. Oh my god, my mom and I are obsessed horror fans, so finally to get a chance to do like a horror horror, like Sacred Lies is in the horror realm, which I love. It's like fairy tale whimsy, this is like horror, and I just do the horror scream. It's super cool. And then I was at the same time, well, right, no, after we wrapped, I got working on a sci-fi samurai movie. I can't say too much about it. It got put on hiatus because mm. of COVID, but we'll be back there to finish it soon. Um, but there's some other stuff too. I gotta keep the mystery alive, Jamie, but keep an <laughs> eye out. 